so we derive this uh, midpoint uh, voltage midpoint current midpoint active power and midpoint reactive power expressions uh, for a uh, symmetrical lossless long transmission line now next what we will do we will try to plot this midpoint voltage with respect to the ratio of active power uh, which is flowing through this uh, uh, this midpoint to this PC where PC is basically surge impedance limiting so, that is a surge impedance loading and PM is the midpoint active power okay we will be interested to see this midpoint voltage with respect to with respect to the ratio of PM to PC. Okay. So, this derivation we will do right now. So, in order to do this derivation, let us again revisit this uh, voltage uh, expression that V r is equal to V m cos beta L by 2 minus I z c I m sin beta L by 2. So, I will write this expression again V r is equal to V m phasor cos beta L by 2 minus I m j z c sin beta L by 2. Again you know understand that this V r is basically uh, this receiving end voltage receiving end voltage. and V m is midpoint voltage okay. and you know that this I m is midpoint current I m is midpoint current midpoint current and Z c as you know it is the surge impedance and beta is representing the H constant right. Now, we, we will write this I m in terms of uh, this uh, P m and V m. Okay. So, we, we have a relationship over here that uh, S m is equal to 3 V m I m star which gives nothing but uh, since V m and I m are in same phase. Uh, so, this gives nothing but the simple multiplication of V m and I m uh, magnitudes. Okay. So, this is basically the real power multiplied by 3. So, this is what representing this real power flowing through this midpoint. Later on we, we have seen that there is no uh, you know uh, imaginary part. So, this represent P m. Okay. So, basically this P m is representing here if you look at this expression it is equal to 3 V m magnitude V m magnitude this V m magnitude is this P m magnitude is this multiplied by I m. Okay. I m magnitude this I m magnitude is this. Okay. So, I am just uh, writing it over here since P m is equal to 3 V m I m magnitude. So, we can write that I m is equal to P m divided by 3 V m right and I will put it over here, but I m will have some angle as well. Now, here what we will do is in order to uh, uh, find out the expression for V m, what we will do is that we will change the reference. Now, here in this particular problem we consider that uh, if you look at we consider that the reference was the sending end voltage that is V s and according to this uh, reference we, we determine the angle 
at the midpoint which is coming out to be lagging with uh, respect to the sending end voltage at an angle of minus delta by 2 and this V r which is lagging with respect to the sending end voltage at an angle of minus delta. So, here for the sake of uh, derivation what we will do we will consider let us consider V m is our reference. So, V m is our reference. So, we will consider V m is reference phasor. So, if it is so then V r will be equal to V r magnitude at an angle minus delta by 2 because you know that V r is lagging delta by 2 angle with respect to the midpoint. This is what we have seen already. Here you can see this V r which you consider minus delta. So, this is considered to be V r at an angle minus delta and V m is V m at an angle minus delta by 2. If you compare these two then you will see there is a uh, uh, phase difference between the midpoint voltage and the receiving end voltage of a angle of del delta by 2. So, same thing is we used by changing the reference. So, here I have changed the reference and we consider that the V m is our uh, reference point instead of the sending end voltage. So, V r uh, will lag uh, with respect to this midpoint voltage at an angle of delta y 2 and I will put it there. So, if I put it there then I will get V r at an angle of minus delta y 2 is equal to V m at an angle 0 cos beta L y 2 minus j i m. Now, magnitude is re basically replaced by this i m magnitude is basically replaced by this, but i m angle will be similar to this V m angle. So, we can write this i m is equal to its uh, magnitude is P m divided by 3 V m and angle is similar to this uh, uh, this midpoint voltage which is 0 because we consider this midpoint voltage as a reference phasor and we also have seen that midpoint voltage and midpoint current are in same phase that we established in this expression. So, we can uh, write that if this midpoint voltage we consider as a reference voltage and it is at an angle 0. So, midpoint current will be also some magnitude with a phase angle at an angle 0. So, I am just replacing this, this is P m divided by 3 V m z c sin beta L by 2. Okay. Now, from this equation what we can write if we take the magnitude of this right hand side and the magnitude of the left hand side and equate then what we will get? we will get a left hand side V r square, right hand side V m square cos square beta L by 2 plus P m divided by 3 V m whole square Z c square sin square beta L by 2. Okay. So, this we got by equating the left hand side magnitude with the right hand side magnitude. Okay. Now, what we will do? We will consider this particular term and we will further simplify this okay. and then we whatever we will get we will put it over here. So, let us write this P m divided by 3 V m square z c square and what we will do we will uh, uh, we will do a, a another thing that we will divide this uh, with this voltage at the sending end and the receiving end side okay, which is considered to be same. So, if we go back and see that since the line is symmetrical we consider that V s and V r are equal and we further consider that 
this V s and V r are equal and equal to V. Okay. So, what we can do is before we simplify this let us do one thing that we will divide the whole uh, left hand side and right hand side with the V square. Okay. So, this is we can do. So, we divide both left hand side and right hand side expression with V square. Then we will uh, have another V square over here. Okay. We will take this part only. Okay. Now, we will simplify this. Let us see what will happen. What we will do is, so this gives us P m square, this gives us 9 V m square. Okay. Now, what we will do is that we again multiply and divide V square to this particular term. Then what we will get that uh, this numerator V square will bring over here and we will keep uh, V m inside that. And this V square will multiply to with this and what we will get it Z C V square whole square. Okay. Now, remember this V is basically representing the power phase voltage of the sending end side as well as the receiving end side. Okay. Now, what we will do is uh, this we will keep it as it is p m square, this 9 we will put inside this and so if we put this 9 inside this then it will be 3 square. Okay. Now, this v m divided by v it, it represents a ratio uh, uh, which means that that v m is uh, divided by the voltage uh, of the sending end side and receiving end side. Okay. So, voltage of the sending end side and receiving end side are considered to be same. So, if we consider this is a base voltage then this v m divided by v represents v m per unit because in power system we know that uh, if, if any quantity is divided with uh, divided by its base value then it is converted to per unit. Okay. It becomes unitless and it, it, it represents a per unit quantity. Uh, okay. So, we consider that uh, uh, V is our base value considering V is our base voltage. So, we, we uh, the ratio of V m to V is representing V m per unit. Now, what this uh, 3 V squared uh, Z c will represent? We know that V is the base voltage. So, 3 V square divided by Z c is nothing but V line to line square divided by Z c. This is nothing but the surge impedance loading or S i L of the network. So, this is let us represent it by P c. Okay. So, then this will be equal to 1 upon P c square. Okay. So, the whole uh, this part would be P m divided by P c whole square multiplied by 1 upon V m per unit whole square. Okay. So, that is what we get okay, and we will put it over here. Again, uh, if we consider so, then the ratio of v, uh, v r to V is equal to 1 because already we consider that uh, this voltage at the receiving end side and the sending end side are equal. You can see over here, we consider that uh, voltage at the receiving end side and the sending end side is are equal. Uh, because the line is symmetrical, because line is symmetrical. So, the ratio V r to V is 1. Okay. Now, this is 1. Now, here when we put this V m to V ratio, this will all be also V m per unit square cos square beta L by 2. Now, this part is being converted to this. So, I am just writing over here. Okay. So, this is P m divided by P c 
multiplied by 1 upon V m per unit square sin square beta L by 2. Okay. So, as you can see that uh, this 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 part this part we, we already derived over here and we got this this same thing we have put over here. Now, what we will do is we will multiply this uh, V m square P u uh, both uh, in the left hand side and the right hand side. So, what we will get? We will get V m per unit square is equal to V m per unit. So, this square and this square will cos this uh, to the power 4 then cos square beta L by 2 plus P m divided by P c. So, this is whole square which was missing here you can see this is whole square. So, this is whole square then sin square beta L by 2. Now, again what we will do is we, we will divide both right hand side and left hand side with cos square beta L by 2. So, what we will get and we will simplify it. So, what we will get is V m per unit square divided by cos square beta L by 2 is equal to V m per unit to the power 4 plus P m to P c ratio square. Then if you divide uh, sin square cos uh, sin square beta L by 2 to cos square beta L by 2 it will give tan square beta L by 2. Right. Again, we will uh, simplify the alignment and make it a quadratic uh, equation form. So, this will give V m per unit 4 minus this V m per unit square divided by cos square beta L by 2 plus P m to P c whole square. tan square beta L by 2 is equal to 0. Okay. I just simply put uh, this left hand side part to right hand side and equate with 0. Okay. So, I will get a equation over here. This forms a quadratic equation. Okay. And if we consider the variable is V m per unit square, then it, it gives a perfect quadratic equation similar to a form of a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0. Okay? And we can find out this uh, value of x from that. So, from this from this we can find out or rather here we will find out this v m square per unit is basically representing the variable over here it is equal to square root of 1 upon 2 cos square beta L by 2 plus minus 1 by 2 root over 1 upon cos to the power 4 beta L by 2 minus 4 P m by P c square multiplied by tan square beta L by 2. So, that is what we get from this and that is what our solution is. Okay. So, this is the solution of V m per unit not V m per unit square this is the solution of V m per unit, but we got it from this particular equation let us consider that V m uh, per unit square is equal to x and then put it over here then we will get the coefficient uh, in the form of a x square plus b x plus c and then is equal to 0 then solve what is x. Similar way we solve it and we get it like this. Okay. So, this equation itself 
will give you the uh, mathematical foundation to plot this. Here we will not plot only V m rather we will plot V m per unit because remember in power system we always represent uh, this voltage in, in the form of per unit. This will facilitate us to, to compare the voltage easily uh, between two buses. Okay. Now, if this is your uh, expression, anybody can uh, use this particular expression in MATLAB or any other software you know and uh, then you can in you can plot this V m per unit versus P m to P c. Now, if you plot this, this then the plot would be something like that. If you plot this, then plot will be something like that. If you consider V m per unit is 1, uh, if you consider that uh, this is 1. 1 per unit, then this plot would be something like this. Okay. So, this point is of our interest, this point corresponds to the point where the ratio of P m by P c would be equal to 1, which means that this point corresponds to the point when the line will be loaded with the search impedance. So, when the line is loaded with the search impedance, then only we will be having the V m per unit equal to 1. As you know that in the last lecture, I have shown you with derivation that when this uh, line will be loaded with search impedance, then uh, this voltage profile will be flat. Okay. Other than that, anywhere you will get a over voltage or under voltage condition. Okay. So, this condition this point stands for when P m is equal to 0, which means it is operating at no load condition. So, when there is a no load condition, uh, this voltage at the midpoint is would be significantly higher than the uh, 1 per unit. So, this much of over voltage, over voltage the uh, midpoint will experience during no load condition and even the neighborhood of this also there would be some amount of over voltage okay. and uh, this will cause this this uh, stress of this mid uh, of the line insulators near to the midpoint because they have to withstand uh, uh, significantly higher voltage this could be uh, 20 percent of higher voltage this could be 10 percent of higher voltage and so on so, the insulators which will be located near to the midpoint of the transmission line will experience some sort of over voltage and uh, there would be chance that they will fail. Okay. And so, there should be a over voltage mitigation required there either at the midpoint or it is the neighborhood. Okay. Now, you, you see that that when this P m uh, to P c is uh, this ratio is higher than 1, then the system will experience or the midpoint will experience some sort of under voltage. Okay. So, that is also a problem if there is an under voltage in a line. Okay. Uh, even though this uh, uh, this both end voltages are regulated to 1 per unit, but the midpoint will suffer from the some amount of over voltage and some amount of under voltage as well. Okay. So, this is what the outcome of this analysis. So, we have some amount, amount of over voltage at no load or light load condition, even there is a small amount of load uh, in the network, then also there would be some amount of over voltage at the midpoint and it is never root. Okay. Similarly, if uh, there is a you know uh, line is uh, loaded with somewhere near to its rated load, there would be some amount to of under voltage there. So, both under voltage and over voltage need mitigation and that is possible through some compensator. So, to mitigate this under voltage and over voltage, we need compensator and a compensator uh, can mitigate this condition. And that is what our goal of uh, understanding different types of compensator, 
which can mitigate this over voltage and under voltage conditions. This will happen in steady state condition, but as I said that at the very beginning compensators are not only built for over voltage and under voltage mitigation, it may help in some other aspects also specifically during dynamic uh, loading condition, specifically during contingency conditions. But in steady state the primary goal of the compensator should be to mitigate this over voltage and under voltage which will be caused by the uh, this light loading condition and this rated loading conditions. Okay. So, this is what I, I, I intend to discuss in this particular lecture. So, in part this particular lecture if I summarize what I discuss uh, first we, we will derive the expression for uh, different parameters in the midpoint which includes voltage at the midpoint, current at the midpoint, active power at the midpoint and the reactive power at the midpoint of a symmetrical lossless long transmission line. Then I have shown you the expression of this midpoint voltage in as a function of this loading. So, this P m by 2 P c ratio is basically representing the degree of loading, the degree of loading to the transmission line with respect to this uh, SIL that is surge impedance loading and when it happens uh, uh, this, this characteristic shows you that there would be some sort of over voltage or under voltage uh, specifically near to this no load or light load condition and near to the rated load condition which uh, is obvious uh, at the midpoint even though the both end voltages are regulated. So, we need to, uh, to have a mitigation of this over voltage and under voltage. Now, how do we meet this uh, uh, how do we mitigate this over voltage and under voltage this will be the lesson of the next lecture. Okay. So, this is all about uh, this lecture thank you for joining we will meet in the next lecture.